And Alrighty. I will give you, um, I'll tell you how many suggestions we have. And then you just, you just pick a number. And then based on that, I'll tell you what, you know, somebody suggested. And then we, we go about 10 minutes or so. And then afterwards, I like to, I like to chat folks and, and find out a little bit more about them. So if you've got time after too, spend a few minutes just like- I've got all the time in the world. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Fine, go ahead. Give me, no, I, I'll pick a number from one to what? <laughs> all right, so I love it. Uh, so we have, let me count up here. We've got bah, 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 one, two. Oh, pick a number between <laughs> one and 63. 27. All right, good old number 27. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, 16, 18, 22, 4, 26, 27. This comes from, I don't know if you, you know her, but Jennifer Osborne Prescott. Oh no, how did I do that? I didn't know she did that. I plead innocent to that. <laughs> well, it's perfect. Uh, the suggestion uh, is the logo on my walker says escape. That's our suggestion. The, the logo on my walker says escape. Well, I have a walker, Jay, and yeah. I it does say escape. However, uh, I don't and people are constantly asking me what that it means. And I guess it means I can move around because of the walker. But I want to change the name of my walker to the Red Baron because my walker is red. Oh, well, I mean, you know, today's the day you can change it. So I'll go ahead and- well, I'll... I've asked for that gift from all my children who I was with recently uh, to give me a gift of a sign that says Red Baron, I can hang on my walker. The reason I do that, I've, my children have always referred to me as the Red Baron. Now, as a younger man, did you was your hair, hair red or was no? It... No, uh, I don't know how it happened. We play a game called Yacht Race, and I always had the one with the red sail. Got it. I mean, Red Baron suits you. Well, I think it does. Yes, I think it does. What we we've historically over the years have had a triple crown. Uh, competition in our family. Uh, one is the yacht race game, the other is uh, beach bocce, and the other is wicked wickets, a game my son Rodney invented. It's croquet, obstacle croquet. It's a devilish game. Wait, so you're playing, you're playing croquet, but then there are obstacles along the way? Yes, very devilish. Of course, I, I my uh, lack of mobility is a this has caused me to retire from everything except yacht race, which you can do sitting down. Oh, and, and yacht races, do you actually have a boat and you bet on oh, a yes, boat? Oh, yes. It's all it go around the board. It's a Parker Brothers game, a little advertisement for Parker Brothers. But it's obsolete now. <laughs> what, what's your favorite, what is your favorite board game? Yacht race. It was a, it really, it, you really deal with the conditions of sailing and the wind and changes and spinnakers. And it calls for a little intelligence, which eliminates some people from playing, of course. But. <laughs> <laughs> Are, have you always been drawn to the water? Are you a water guy? No, no, I'm not. Uh, 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 actually, I did at one time own a sunfish. Uh, uh, which I used to sail in a place called Weekapog, Rhode Island on the ponds. I was not a very good sailor. I would generally go around in circles. Uh, or, but the ponds at Weekapog are all very shallow, so if you tipped over, you could walk to shore at any point. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not a sailor. Uh, uh, Franklin Roosevelt and Winston Churchill both love the sea, you know. They yeah. loved it. And, and they both love battleships, as a matter of fact. But I, Never owned a battleship. I owned a sunfish. Uh, I I think I would be terrible as a captain on the water. I I would I the the fact of there's a chance to be lost out at sea is like one of my most terrifying fears is to be at sea lost and there's a storm coming and there's no way you can get back. That that to me is like oh I can't I couldn't do it. 
I don't like to be out of sight of land, although I have crossed the Atlantic a couple of times by boat. Uh, 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 and uh, I have done a sailing ship around uh, the Caribbean, but I'm not a sailor. No, no, no. But I don't get seasick. <laughs> really? No, I don't get seasick. Oh, yeah. I, I have a friend, uh, a buddy of mine, Russell, and he just bought, he, he's a, he got his license as a captain. And so he lives in Chicago and he, he has one of these, you know, boats that he takes people out and he can take up to 20 people on this boat or 25 people. And he's, he loves the water. So he has to live near it. Uh, he doesn't get seasick either. I, I remember what? once he took me out on the boat and he said, you should put some sunscreen on. And I said, ah, I'm going to be fine. We're only going to be out for an hour. And I got like second or third degree burns on my face because I didn't wear sunscreen. And we were oh, I bet you did. I bet you did. Yeah. And well, was, you know, one time in my life, uh, uh, when I first retired, I lived right on the water down in Georgia. I lived, we built a house on an island down there. And I thought I, so much water around, I thought I would buy a boat. The first thing I did is I went to school and I got so I could, pass a test which will allow me to, you know, sail a boat, or a motorboat this uh, round. And uh, then I uh, observed to a variety of people that I was in the market to buy a boat. And everybody I said this to who owned a boat said, why don't you buy mine? And that's when I decided not to buy a boat. <laughs> 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 so I, uh, I thought everybody wanted to sell their boat, and maybe it wasn't the wisest thing for me to buy one. <laughs> you thought if people, if so many people want to get rid of it, then there's no re like that's a sure sign not to buy it. I went out on other people's boats. That was a lot less expensive. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that the best thing to do? Is like you go on someone else's boat. And then you're able to leave and they take care of it. They do all the maintenance. That's the other thing too, the maintenance of they the They serve boat. drinks and all, yes. you know, all beverages and maybe a few snacks. And, uh, and uh, it's, that's the way to travel, you know. I mean, to travel, there's something romantic too about being able to travel like across the Atlantic in a boat. Like I've you done don't- that. I've done that twice. How long was it? How long was the journey? Oh, I don't know. Four or five days. I forget which. I, I did it on the Queen Elizabeth, so it was a fairly <laughs> big boat. <laughs> <laughs> and was it a vacation thing or like was it a business trip? Uh, well, no. That's a long story. Yes, it was. A, it started out as a vacation trip. It was the one time in my life I ever got sick. And I ended up in a British hospital for six weeks. And the British doctors wouldn't let me fly home they, because they are great things about altitude sickness afterwards. Oh. So they, so I got myself on the Queen Elizabeth going home and they put me at the captain's table, maybe out of a sense of guilt as they were the ones that nearly <laughs> killed me. <laughs> I, I took a cruise once to uh, it was either Alaska. I took two cruises, one to Alaska, one to Hawaii. And in the room on TV shown uh, on a loop. So like every day would be Titanic. Yeah. Why would you show on a boat? Why would you show Titanic as one of the movies? Oh, it's like going up in an airplane and watching an airplane disaster yes. on the screen. <laughs> and this is what happens when your two motors explode. Yes. I just couldn't, I couldn't imagine why they would every day you turned it on and at some point during the day that movie was shown. I'm like, it's already, it's already strange enough. And I remember being on the ship and watching a show and the ship was rocking. So the performers were trying to balance them, themselves out. There was a juggler and he kept dropping his, his pins and his balls because the ship kept swaying back and forth. And I thought, this is the funniest thing I've ever seen. Well, that is, you know, Jennifer's husband, Jennifer, that lady was on earlier. Yeah, uh, he can jump. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Christopher is a juggler. Wow. He throws balls up in the air and catches them. And I don't know how anybody does that. I mean, imagine trying to do that, and then on top of it, 
you're on, it's, it's tilting back and forth and you just, it's not in any sort of rhythm. It's just, it'll go one side or the other and you're still trying to juggle. I mean, that's a skill. Yeah. Oh, oh boy. Yes, it is. I agree. I agree. <laughs> <laughs> I never, I never thought, yeah, I remember I saw a movie once and it was called Perfect Storm and it was about these fishermen in Boston. George Clooney's in that. George Clooney's in it and they... I have a total they, recall on everything, I should tell you that. I have an identic memory. Do you really? Yes. Oh, that's, I mean, <laughs> that is such a great skill to have is to be able to recall those Sometimes things. it's not a good skill to have. Sometimes <laughs> you remember too much. <laughs> Sometimes you just wish you could forget something. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I remember that movie and it was like they, they, they go out and they kept going farther and farther and farther and they, they the like The waves got bigger and bigger waves... and bigger. Oh, horrifying thing. Yeah, I, that I don't go in the ocean either because there are things that can bite you there. So I, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't swim in the ocean anymore. No, the last time I went, I went to the beach uh, about three weeks ago and somebody got stung by a, a, I think it was a stingray or a jellyfish. And oh, yeah. that confirmed to me, it's like, I'm not, I, I like pools. <laughs> I don't like, I don't like where I swim where you, there's like creatures. I'm just not a fan of that. No, nor am I. You know, in Greece, uh, they, Greece has some of the most beautiful beaches in the world but they are plagued with jellyfish because uh, so many oil tankers went in there and they, when they let their ballast out, they brought jellyfish all from all over the world. And, and even the prime minister's wife got stung. Oh, really? This is Pompeo, yeah. I heard you're not, the, the, you're, they say you're supposed, like one way to get rid of the sting is if you relieve yourself on on where you got stung, but I heard that's just a, that doesn't work. I have never heard that, Jay. That oh, yes. is something I'll tuck away in my memory file. <laughs> <laughs> Scene! Oh, wait, that was great. <laughs> You've added to my wealth of knowledge. I, I'm most appreciative of this. I heard, I did hear that, and then I read recently that, like, no, like, that's just an old wives' tale where, like, it can't really relieve anything, and you shouldn't be doing that. Well, there are always old wives' tales around, you know. Yeah. I think if you say it enough, people believe it. Well, uh, if saying goes, though, repeating a lie doesn't make it true. Right. <laughs> Thank God. Thank God, right? <laughs> oh, it's sad commentary in the world today. <laughs> um, now, I had somebody who mentioned in the, when I posted... Because I, I posted your photo to get suggestions, and somebody said, "Oh, who is that? He looks very distinguished. Like I think they thought you were some sort of like veteran performer. You're not an improviser. You've never really done this." Oh no, no, I'm a lecturer though. I, I'd like I'm I as I said, I've given over forty historic ledger, yeah. lectures in my retirement, and I'm I'm proud of them, Jay, because. Uh, I t generally talk for an hour on a whole variety of people, Hitler, Churchill, Roosevelt, Douglas MacArthur, Roosevelt, Hamilton was my most recent one, without words and music, mind you, and, and a little more accurate in the play, I might add. Yes, yes. But I, I have never used a note for any of those lectures. You're just going off the top of your head. Yeah, I never know quite what I'm going to say, but I research and research, so I, I get an outline so I don't get lost. But I love to talk. <laughs> I said already I like the sound of my own voice, didn't I? <laughs> so, uh, but uh, uh, here at the, uh, the village of Duxbury in Massachusetts, which is a fine, fine place, by the way, I give them a little plug there. Um, I will be giving my seventh Zoom lecture for the people here in isolation, you know? Can, can people who aren't there, like, is that available to the public? Like, can anybody? Oh, yeah. Uh, people have tuned in from, from nine different states. Uh, if you ever want to see any of my yeah. lectures, just go to my 
uh, that lady who was on earlier, this is my daughter, I believe. Yeah. You know, she wasn't born in the usual way, Jay. I have to confess. This. How was wait? How was she born? What was the, what was her? We found her in a pumpkin patch on <laughs> Halloween. I mean, this is true. And, but she can tell you how to get. Uh, I'm on YouTube too. I've got Churchill and Hamilton on YouTube. She can tell you how to do that. Or uh, she has the Zoom passwords. October 6th, I'm talking on Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It will be terrific. Have, have you honestly have, stated? <laughs> have you have you always had that? Like when you started doing these lectures, have you always had? I'm just going to go up there. I have an outline, but I'm not going to have notes, and I'm I'm just going to to speak from my knowledge in the top of my head. Yes. Uh, well, of course, I only started giving lectures in retirement. Uh, although I've always been interested in history ever since I was a wee boy, uh, but. Uh, I'm a lawyer by education, but I never practiced law. I went into business. Mm. And the first talk I was to make in business, I, I was living in Dayton, Ohio. I was driving up to Cleveland to give this talk. And I had put together an elaborate script of what I was going to say. And around halfway to Cleveland, past the point of no return, I noted that I'd forgotten my entire script. <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, what am I going to do? And I thought, what are you talking about, Dick? You know your subject, just give it. And I did. So wow. I never used to know it ever were. So that mistake was the biggest gift for you. Yeah. Well, I, uh, I, I, in high school, I had a teacher, Mildred Memory. I can remember, she was a wonderful teacher. She taught history, but she was also a drama person. Uh. And she taught me how to project my voice to the back row of the balcony. Yes. And that is, a lot of people can talk, but they don't know how to, it isn't a question of loudness, it's projection that counts. And, yeah. and to hit that last row of the balcony is important. And I can do that. I like it. It's funny, I, I know a lot of performers who have been trained who can't do that. They don't understand, you have to, and and the way it was told to me early on is we would have people who would like pull the lights, turn the lights on and off, and they'd do the sound, and, and they would be farthest back in the theater. So my teachers and directors would say, hey, they want to laugh too, so make sure you project so you reach them. And if you can't hear it, 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 it we say in theater, if you can't it's hear it, nothing. it's in heaven. <laughs> it's nothing. Well, it's important in the village of Duxbury to be able to do that because, frankly, we are an older community and not everybody here is so good. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I tell, you know, it's funny when, when I've done shows for people who are like, you know, in their 60s, 70s, 80s, when I was younger, sometimes performers get thrown and I go, no, no, you need to be louder. What, why they're quiet is they can't hear you. And so they're not going to laugh be if they can't hear you. So you just have to make sure you're louder to make sure that everyone in that space has that same experience. Yeah, that's true. Oh, well, uh, you, yeah, your daughter, Jennifer is great. She's, um, she's on a, uh, an improv team, I coach, and she reached out to me and said, Hey, would you be up for doing something with my dad? Uh, who's never improvised and I was like of course and like I, I saw some of your I did see you have uh, Some of those lectures up on YouTube and so I watched some and I was like, oh man, this guy gets it So like even though you've never done an improv show you've got the improviser mentality already Well, it's it's fun uh, uh, You know, I I had forgotten all about it once Jennifer's a little girl she used to record uh, and I used to improvise with her, <laughs> and I listen. She brought a couple of them. We were together recently, a uh, little band of reunion, and uh, she played some of them. And I found them quite amusing, and they were done. I don't know what, thirty, thirty-five <laughs> years ago. Oh, it's <laughs> but so. My daughter Jennifer, she is. Uh, you have to be very careful of her. She is. Uh, somewhat a little unbalanced at times, I think. <laughs> I know she's listening. <laughs> the reason that I connect so well with her is because I am too. Yeah, she is. 
creative person. Really, oh. she is. She's just full of fun all the time. I mean, she, and, uh, she yeah. She's she just put something on YouTube where she's mixing together. Uh, did you see that? <laughs> she's doing chemicals. She's, fucking, she's putting the, the vi virus. I think I saw Clorox was one of them. Yeah, and then she's like, I mean, she she puts all these chemicals. She it's a, just such a funny character, but she puts these up, these little you know bits she does, and they're just truly they're just so creative and funny. Hmm. Well, she's clever. She, she is, but sometimes we all worry about her. <laughs> That's the biggest compliment we can get as performers. <laughs> it's when people are like, I'm a little worried about you. It's like, cool. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, she's uh, appeared on the stage, too, uh, yeah. uh, New Canaan Players. She's actually pretty good. Yeah. She's a good actress. Well, that's the thing. Like, what I noticed working with her is, like, she's really good at improv, and she's also really good as an actor and character. And it's just fascinating to watch. It's so interesting to me to watch what comes from people's brains when they give a chance of, like, not knowing they're not going to fail. What can happen that you're just like, what are, how did that come to you? How can you think about that? It's great. Yeah, that's true. You got, <laughs> you got to be a little innovative. Yes. <laughs> well, Dick, this was a pleasure, and I can't wait uh, until we do it again, whether we do a virtual one again or, or even maybe in person. It was just such a pleasure. Thanks for taking time out. Well, yeah, I've had fun. Thank you. I, uh, I've enjoyed this. It's lovely to talk to you. You're a very gracious man, and oh. uh, you make it easy to talk. Thanks, you too, Dick. I really appreciate it. Have a great rest of your day. It's been, a, it's been fun. Thank you.